Welcome, happy day to you. I thought it was appropriate today. I'm Dr. Wilson Trevino here at the Innovation Center in Atlanta, Georgia. HR Bernal, how are you? I thought it was appropriate today since I'm with ABC, your attitude, your beliefs, your commitment, sharing ideas, sharing cool events, and also giving you new, uh, reviews of different products. And today I thought it was appropriate since it's the uh, day of the great first debate of the Republican candidates for president to talk on uh, someone that looms high and uh, mighty over the Republican Party, which is Ronald Reagan. And there was a new book, new biography that just came out. It's, uh, it's called Reagan the Life by a guy named H.W. Uh, Brands. He's a professor at the University of Texas. He, is, he holds the Jack S. Blanton Senior Chair in History at the University of Texas at Austin and New York Times bestselling author. He was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize at Biography for the First American and Traitor in His Class. So this book just came out. There was a nice review in the New York Times and that's how I got interested in this book. I'm a uh, big uh, admirer of Ronald Reagan. One of the reasons why I got into politics and I'm a political scientist is because I met Reagan one time. Here's a photograph that I actually got him to sign that I took uh, he came to a local mall, and we went out there to see him. Didn't know anything about politics. Uh, there was these 18-wheeler rigs we got underneath. It was a hot summer day in August, and uh, we saw him. He came over, shook our hand, said hello. I thought this was kind of interesting, and it got in my ears uh, kind of tagged into, or my interest tagged into politics. So my uh, interest started from there, and because of that, I went on and studied. I was involved in politics, worked on several campaigns, I've worked on a presidential campaign, and then I went and got a PhD in political science from Auburn University in, Alam in Alabama. So today I wanted to talk about uh, Reagan, and I think uh, that sometimes it's interesting we look at the legacy of Reagan, and so many Republicans uh, yearn on him. So I want to go over kind of 10 things that I think why Reagan uh, still is uh, involved and remembered in our history today. Uh, first of all, the book is, it's a, it's a good book. If you're not familiar with Reagan, if you haven't read anything else about him, and you want a good book that has kind of a good overview of his life, this is an excellent book. Because what it is, it's kind of a compilation of uh, his diary, of other works uh, put together, one thing, and it kind of tells you in a storyteller form. Uh, there is really no big revelations in the book, no smoking guns, nothing that really hasn't been said before. But it's uh, not that big in uh, perspective to it's about 800 pages to a biography, a good biography of someone, uh, someone that lived into their 90s. He, so far, is still the oldest living president. Um, uh, president Reagan uh, certainly it was, is uh, remembered in history for many different things. But today, I wanted to just kind of hit on 10 points, 10 things you can take away and you can kind of maybe did not know about Reagan, and maybe it'll inspire you to read this book by Reagan, The Life, uh, by H.W. Brands, uh, a professor at the University of Texas in Austin. Uh, in some places in the book, it is a little bit of a policy wonk book, where he goes into the negotiations with the Soviet Union over the treaties, and they get a little bit uh, wonkish into that. Uh, so there's some places that if you're not into policy like I am, you may want to kind of skim over. But he does hit on the highlights of his presidency. It does zoom by pretty fast. It starts off as he was in the twilight of his acting career. Uh, he had been a spokesman for GE. He really didn't have any gigs to follow up on. And Goldwater's campaign was struggling. Uh, they were running against Lyndon Johnson, who was b being very aggressive toward him, had painted Goldwater as being kind of a right-wing nut. There was a saying slay during that campaign uh, that they said, in your heart, you know he's right, Goldwater, you know he's right. And then the Johnson people added to it, in your heart, you know he's right, but in your guts, you know he's nuts. So Goldwater had, was having a hard time breaking through. He was categorized as someone that was uh, war-friendly and that he was going to drop the nuclear uh, bomb. There was a great commercial that only ran a few times, which has been kind of seminal in politics, where this, they start counting backwards and this little girl is picking a flower and they drop the bomb. And then it has a, over, a voiceover by President Johnson, and that scared a lot of people. Of course, Johnson was uh, coming back 
uh, your President Kennedy had gotten assassinated and Johnson had run, uh, hey J. Rowe, what's, what's up, I haven't seen you in a while, was running on the legacy of the work he had done on behalf of President Kennedy. He did civil rights and we're, now we're celebrating uh, the civil rights uh, legislation, 50 years, and a lot of things that Johnson pushed, he kind of used the momentum from the Kennedy assassination to do that. So today, uh, J. Rowe, we're talking about uh, this book, Reagan, The Life. I think it's appropriate since tonight is the debate between the Republicans. And so, on, so many people evoke uh, the history and the name of Reagan in their discussion and trying to continue. As a matter of fact, Donald Trump, who right now is leading in the polls, has taken the slogan from Reagan, Let's Make America Great Again, which was a poll. I have uh, a uh, poster back here. If you, if you see it, it says, Let's Make America Great Again. That is an actual vintage vintage poster from that era that uh, uh, it came from the campaign office uh, and, and so it's it, you know Reagan came in on a one of the reasons why people love Reagan and why he the first thing to remember is that uh, he was very optimistic during that time uh, we were kind of losing our mojo if you look about the 70s uh, President Johnson had gotten beat up with Vietnam President uh, Nixon came in that he had a secret plan that he was going to eliminate and he was going to secure and save and get us out of Vietnam. Then uh, he had to uh, resign in disgrace because of some problems with some tapes. And then uh, President uh, Ford came in, the cleanup guy. And uh, then uh, President, Ken uh, President Carter was elected because he was not from Washington. He was an outsider. He was going to bring integrity. His big uh, motto was that he was not going to lie. He, he was never lied to you. Uh, during the 70s, late parts, we had the oil crisis where um, oil prices got out of control. It affected our economy. Also, some hostages got taken over. And we were pretty much, as a nation, getting beat up overall. So here comes this guy. And President Kennedy, excuse me, President Carter gave a, a speech. It's called the Malay speech where he had a sweater on and he in essence said that we had already reached our peak that the only way to survive we had to turn out our heat and just survive to this malaise that had kind of taken over the country. A lot of similarities between now and that period of time. Uh, America was kind of in the funk. He comes in this guy who's an actor who is optimistic and is really to uh, take on the reins. And when he, when the Goldwater campaign asked him to speak in uh, that, that uh, speech uh, Reagan had been traveling the country for GE, giving these uh, uh, rubber chicken circuit speeches, so he had some good lines that connected with the audience. So he gave a speech that was televised on uh, national audience. At that time, they were concerned about using uh, too many ads to promote a president. They didn't feel that you needed to sell a president like a box of soap. Uh, so they decided to block, a, uh, get a block of time, and have president have a. Uh, Ronald Reagan speak on behalf of Goldwater and against President Johnson. Turns out that speech he gave was very well received and it kind of gave him a national platform, that is Reagan. And even though Goldwater lost, it kind of was the launch of Reagan's career. Reagan went on to be governor of California and he also then went on to uh, become president for two terms. Uh, his previous political experience, he had been uh, involved in the uh, in the movie studios and the uh, union there. And he also had done some campaigning for, uh, interesting enough, FDR and Truman as, uh, as a Democrat. So first thing, he was very optimistic. He always said that the, the, the better days are ahead. He uh, talked about America as going to come, you know, make the rounds and come about again. He talked about that, uh, you know, you always want to look at the sunrise, not the sunset. And when he gave his inaugural address as president, uh, it was the first time it was on the west side of the Capitol facing uh, the um, the west where we always sent people out to um, seek new adventure and seek new opportunity. So it was very symbolic of that. So he was a very optimistic individual. So that's the first thing people really connected with him. He was very optimistic. Uh, the second thing is he was a very pragmatic uh, politician. Even though he espoused a lot of conservative principles, a lot of conservative ideas, he believed in working together and finding solutions to problems, so he was a very good negotiator. Uh, he didn't take politics uh, seriously. He was able, he always kidded that after five o'clock, uh, he was off the clock and he didn't have political enemies. Him and Tip O'Neill, uh, Chris Matthews wrote a great book that came out uh, last year, the year before last, that talked about Tip O'Neill's and Reagan's relationships, how these two Irish guys in the greater good, even though they were 
tough partisans. Uh, they worked together on finding solutions. They found solutions with Social Security, trying to make sure it was solvent. They, they really worked on to legislation. Today's uh, world, we've gotten so partisan, we've gotten so uh, divisive, we've gotten so rabid, and the people that are on both extremes that we're not getting anything done. And we're losing those people in the middle that are able to come together and say, hey, I know you say things on campaign trail, I say things on the campaign trail, but let's make this policy work in order to uh, help the American people, in order to help the country move forward in a certain area. So he was a very pragmatic politician, and that made him uh, very successful. Also, he was a very good man. Everything I've ever read about Reagan, I've read almost every book about him, uh, he was just a good guy. Just a, a naturally good guy that was always uh, trying to do good things. He uh, was born in, uh, in Illinois, so he came from the Midwest. Uh, his mother uh, was a very uh, good uh, Christian woman, very uh, uh, ideal woman. His, his father was a drunk, so a lot of responsibility came onto him, but he was just a nice guy. And I think a lot of times we're trying to uh, psychoanalyze the way he was. And I think, you know, there's some people that are just, you know, naturally good people. In previous generations, what I have found is that so often those people had a responsibility for their life, for their work, and they just did it. They didn't bitch. And I think my generation, Generation X and the Millennials, we're just complainers. We're whiners and we're complainers. And one of the reasons is we've had it so good that uh, we don't have any reason uh, but complain. So we haven't really had to suffer. I mean, he, in his life, Reagan, he came from a time period that radio was the new medium to uh, see uh, people walk on the moon, to be able to be a television broadcaster and see how uh, dominant television and this new media had uh, taken over politics, uh, per se. So he was a good man. The second, the fourth thing, so the first thing, he was optimistic. The second thing, he was pragmatic. Third thing, he was a good man. Fourth thing, he saw uh, politics as public service. He, all, he uh, kept a diary uh, as president, which I recommend all of you to read. It's a very fascinating read. Every day he wrote in this diary his thoughts. And it's more than just simply self-serving in politics. It's kind of what he did, what he was thinking. Uh, you really get an insight into him. Uh, but the last day that he was president, he, uh, he left without any regrets. And he saw it as public service. He saw it that this power, this mantle, uh, was not a kingship was not a God-given right to him, but it was something that he was borrowing because he was an elected person through the people, through democracy. So he believed in public service. And you never really saw him uh, bashing that whole concept of uh, public service. He did criticize the bureaucracy. He did criticize there was too much government. But overall, the, the workings of the government, the workings of the American people, the workings of democracy, he was very uh, uh, pro that. And I think that's very important to think about. Uh, the fifth thing is he didn't take himself pretty seriously. He had a lot of good lines. He was just a, a kind of a relaxed guy. He always liked to tell stories and he liked to tell jokes in his Irish tradition. And uh, I think that's one important thing to have as a, as a leader. Uh, it really anybody in life. Is sometimes we get too tied up in what we're doing and we lose sight of the bigger issue. You know, all of us are going to be gone. One day this is all going to end and we realize that we're ending up in the same place. So why worry? Why take yourself so ter seriously? I see so many people on uh, these broadcasts that are so intense that they're, they're promoting, promoting, promoting that they forget that, you know, we just we'll really want to engage and connect and share ideas. So a lot of his jokes, a lot of his lines, when he got shot, uh, there was a lot of good lines that came out of that. Uh, he looked up to the doctors and he said, uh, you know, I hope you all are Republicans. There is a great book called R a Raw High Down that talks about when he got shot, how close he really came to, to uh, being assassinated. He was leaving the Hilton Hotel. He spoke to the, the a tough crowd, Teamsters, and as he was walking out. There was this guy, John Hinckley, came out, had mixed in with the uh, press area, had shot at him. And uh, one shot hit Jim Brady, one shot had a Secret Service guy, another shot hit the, uh, the car, the limousine, and it flattened out and it came inside his rib and came within a half an inch of his heart, his main valve here. And it was sliced here on the side. Uh, when he got in the car, uh, the Secret Service guy thought that he was uh, uh, safe and secure, but he started coughing up blood. They ran him to the hospital, took him to the hospital. He came out. Uh, he was losing a lot of blood. He collapsed. He, um, fortunately, the doctor that was on call there was a Vietnam doctor that knew, uh, and that is an inner city a doctor, an inner city hospital, so they dealt with a lot of gunshots, a lot of bullet wounds. 
So this doctor who had worked in Vietnam saw this little slit and instantly he knew that was a gunshot slit. And uh, if he had not been trained or did not know how to identify that, uh, seconds Reagan would have probably not made it. So Reagan was losing a lot of blood and they, they operated him and they took out the, uh, the bullet. And in that book, Raw High Dam, it doesn't go into detail in this book. Today I'm reviewing, if you just join me, Reagan, The Life by H.W. Brands, um, how this doctor was determined to take that bullet out. And he stuck his hand in and he wiggled around and pulled it out. Today, if you go out to the Reagan Library in Simi Valley, California, you can see that bullet. It's on display with an x-ray of it. So it's uh, very uh, heartwarming that he was able to survive that. So he didn't take himself too seriously. Even when he got shot, he was making jokes. Uh, the sixth thing is he really was the first made-for-TV president. He had worked in Hollywood. He was an actor, so he understood the dynamics of sound and lights and stuff. One time he was asked by an interviewer, he says, do you think being an actor affected you being president? And his answer was, I don't know how you can be president without being an actor. So he understood the delivery. He understood how to use that new medium, kind of like the concept of the fire chat uh, fireside chats that uh, FDR used, he kind of used that with uh, this new medium of television and really came across. He was the first president to really um, use the background, the backdrop, to tell a story. Actually, President Nixon was the first president that tried to, every day they would have a meeting his staff and say, what's going to be the headline the next day? And they, they painted uh, a, a message of the day. Well, Reagan, it was a picture. So if you see a lot of the, the Reagan events, you, it's, you know, they're pretty pictures. They have lots of flags. They have, you know, lots of young people. They have, you know, a uh, band. So it's a, you're painting a picture because we're visual people. And when we see something, we can tell a story instantly through a picture instead of someone telling you something. And sometimes when you look at commercial advertising, you know, the, the message, the photograph, the video is telling you a story without them af actually telling you to pick up on on. So Reagan understood how you need to paint and tell uh, a uh, story. The seventh thing at Reagan, I think he's so popular why we look back to him, is he had some very simple principles, some simple principles that he made decisions on. Uh, his conservative values, his belief in the American people, his beliefs on limited government, and how is it that you're able to kind of move forward. Sometimes you get so mired in the detail that nothing gets done. And I think that's one of the problems I have today is that uh, no one makes a decision. They just kick the can down the, the curb. And sometimes as a leader, as a president, as a uh, person the head of the organization, you have to make a decision. Part of my ABCs and my hashtag, my title, or my Twitter, is, okay, see you later, j -Row. thanks for dropping by, uh, thank you for the hearts, is that you have these, uh, so, so you have these, uh, these principles and these ideas, in my hashtag, ABC Vision, it stands for A, your attitude, the way you feel about the world, B, your beliefs, your core values, and of course, your C, your commitment, so you have to have goals and ideas, but it's those Bs, those beliefs, are so valuable in how you make decisions and how you start focusing and moving toward that goal. I think in social marketing and social media, sometimes we forget sight. You get so excited of the hype of the technology. What is the story you're trying to share? What is your objective? What are the means? You know, Zig Ziglar said, "You can get anything you want unless um, uh, you can get anything you want as long as you help other people get what they want." But first, you have to be clear what is it you want, and that can be sometimes a challenge. We don't know. So how do you find out? Well, you go on a journey. You sit back and you reflect and you're like, if I had all the time, I had all the top money in the world, what would I do? What is it that I want to do? And then you, that is your goals and that are your dreams. And then you start tackling and moving in that direction. But Reagan had some core valuable conservative principles that got him through his presidency. And sometimes when you're in that defining moment, when you have to go left or right, you have to stand up for something. Uh, he was also very open about his life. When he got uh, the diagnosis of Alzheimer's, uh, he, he was very open of coming out and saying that he had that diagnosis, that he was moving toward the sunset of his life. There's a great letter that he wrote that is very touching that he hand wrote and he kind of shared and was, came clean of what was a problem that he had. And it talks a little bit of this book on the, um, his golden years when he started uh, losing uh, his memories on how he uh, started just forgetting simple things. At the end, he really did not recognize anybody and he couldn't walk, couldn't talk, even forgot who Nancy was. And uh, it's just a very sad uh, kind of chapter. There's a, a story in here, James Baker, who was uh, his kind of his media guy, one of the people, the trifecta that uh, 
was uh, important in his administration, went to visit him, and that Reagan was all dressed up in his cuffs, and he looked like Reagan. He had a book, and he went up, and Reagan didn't recognize uh, John Deaver, and he uh, asked him what to do it, and he was reading a book about horses. It was totally clueless of who he was. So he was very open about it. And also when he had prostate cancer, when he had a polyp in his, uh, in his, uh, in his colon, uh, he was very open about those medical things. And throughout his presidency, he was very transparent. Um, he also was very uh, pragmatic in a lot of things that he did. Um, one of the things we forget that uh, Reagan, as much as we, they tout current day Republicans as the optimum Republican, we forget is that he used to be a Democrat. He was a Democrat. He, re he actually campaigned for FDR. Uh, he also was the first president to be divorced. Uh, he had been married to Jane Wyman. And in Jane Wyman, they had adopted two kids. They adopted Maureen Reagan, who died of cancer, and then Michael Reagan, who Michael right now is a radio talk show host and also is a media commentator. Uh, Michael uh, and Maureen were adopted with Jane Wyman, and of course he married Nancy, and then he had uh, Ron Jr., and he had Patty Davis, which is uh, his two uh, child, children with Nancy. When he ran for president, uh, his uh, handlers told him not to uh, be in photographs or not allow Maureen or Michael from his first marriage to be with him because they would make him look old. They were in their 30s. His younger New York family was in their 20s. So Maureen got upset, went up and talked to him, and, he's, and Reagan was, well, you know, I hired these political pros, so I have to kind of heed their advice. So he was very uh, pragmatic in that area. And sometimes we forget or we're conservatives, Republicans forget that uh, he changes views over time. In today's uh, Republicans, so many are, ra are rabid, so many are uh, so uh, focused on certain things that they lose sight of the bigger issue. How do we compromise? How do we find solutions to problems? How do we deal with the, the bigger questions that aren't sexy? How do we work with Social Security, with water policy, with tax policy, with uh, you know things that affect us every day? There are some issues that are on the fringes that yeah, they're important, but I think we have deeper fundamental things we need to look at. And the tenth thing why I think Reagan, people still look back at him, is there's a bit of a nostalgia of the 80s. I grew up in the 80s. You know, 80s, we had a boom economy. We were not at war. We were also a simpler time. We didn't have all this noise with social media. We didn't have the 24 hours of uh, news. We were uh, in an era that we were uh, you know, much simpler. And sometimes you look back to the good old days. But sometimes you look back and the good old days weren't that good. But there is a nostalgia of the 80s, and that's one of the reasons why I think Reagan is still uh, important. So these are the top ten things, I think, why Reagan is still hailed as a, as a true um, conservative hero. And I, here's a, a picture of Reagan that I got him to sign, that I met, I had met him on several occasions. And he was a very charismatic individual, very personable individual. Uh, so first thing is that he was very optimistic. Second thing, he was a pragmatic political leader. Third thing, he was a good man. Fourth thing, he was uh, very focused on, on public service. Fifth thing, he didn't take himself too seriously. Uh, sixth thing, he was the first made-for-TV president. Seventh, he had some simple principles that followed that time. Eighth thing, he was about uh, very open about his illnesses, very open about himself. Uh, the ninth thing, there are a lot of things that uh, were not consistent in what we think as a conservative Republican would do, like campaign for FDR or be a divorce president or also, um, you know, sometimes not really uh, be as rabid as we to see the current conservatives be at. And the tenth thing is uh, nostalgic of the good old days. So those are the ten reasons why I think Reagan is still important. I highly recommend this book. It is a good book if you have not read anything on Reagan. Um, even if you have read stuff on Reagan, it's a good kind of refresher. Uh, there's really nothing new in here that I've seen anywhere else, but it's a good kind of refresher on understanding Reagan. Now that we are, you know, 30 plus years uh, from the start of his presidency, and now we're almost 30 years. He left the White House in uh, 1989, so we're getting close to almost 30 years of the end of the Reagan era. But there's still, when you hear the name Reagan, there is a, a, a set of nostalgia, and there's a, a sense of hope and a sense of optimism. But sometimes... Uh, people in the past, we forget the richness and the depth that they contributed in history and throughout time. So those are the reasons why I think, and I recommend that you check out this book. You can check it on uh, your, your favorite bookstore or online, but it is written by H. Uh, w. Brands, who holds the Jack Blackman, no, Jack Blayton Senior Chair in History at the University of Texas at Austin.
a New York Times bestselling author. He was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize and biographer for the first American and the, the traitor in his class. So thank you for watching me. Follow me on Twitter and follow me on Instagram. Follow me here on Periscope and Meerkat at ABC Vision. That's A, like your attitude, B, your beliefs, and C, your commitment, and you have a vision of where you want to go. So follow me at ABC Vision. Share this with your followers. I would appreciate those that are on the web. I appreciate you watching. And those of you that are watching me on YouTube and other platforms, I certainly am glad that you have taken this time to listen to me. But it's very important in our democracies to be informed, to get to know our candidates, and to be part of the system because it's we the people. It's nobody else. It's just we the people are the ones that are going to find the solutions to our problem today because America is great and America needs to get out of its funk and realize that, yeah, America is going to have better days ahead. So thank you for watching. Dr. Wilson Chavino. Have a great day and thanks for listening.